Hello and welcome to another Glyphs tutorial for the YSDN3003 course in typeface design. This one's going to be another short one because I'm just going to be talking about how do you fit the caps and also how do you fit your uh, punctuation marks. Remember in class, in this class, you only really are required to do a few capital letters and you are only required to do a few punctuation marks but it's just worth knowing this because it's something that you will need to do and you'll encounter something that I didn't show you in the other video but I mentioned were two things I was going to show you uh, some more test document stuff and I was also going to talk to you about fitting lighter and bolder forms so that's what I want to show you really quickly to start and then I will do the caps and I will do the punctuation now if we take let's take source sans black and let's open it very bold letter forms and let's take the lightest sans we can get now source so adobe has actually made source sans and source serif a variable available as variable fonts as prototypes anyway and uh, you can actually work with them um, so that you can see how their design space is set up you see that these are all static instances but it can behave as a variable font too. Okay, so when you're working on fitting, we talked about fitting. By the way, if you have multiple fonts open, you can navigate them through here. We worked on fitting the regular weight of source, and that was our kind of main text weight. Uh, we talked about how we relate the counter spaces. We want about half the counter space and a little bit less than half in a sans design. In fact, I think this these ends are actually feeling just a little too open overall, but we more or less want this kind of relationship. But the bolder we go, the tighter those counter spaces have to be because the counter spaces are what are being taken away. And the lighter we go, the farther apart the counter spaces have to be because it's kind of a to explain that it's a it's a perception that our eyes have when we're looking at the shapes, but <clears throat> if you think about what's going on graphically with these shapes, they're losing volume or they're gaining volume in their interior areas. That's how a letter becomes bolder or becomes lighter because we're not going up really with a bold, we're going wider. So we're taking away counter space. So if I look at source black and I grab an N, Notice the difference here. If this was in a variable design space, I could flip around between them. But actually, here's a good example. This variable font I keep showing you. And look at this. Bold, ultra bold. And see what's going on? What's really happening in this character is it's getting wider, but it's also the boldness of a character is when I take away counter space. If I was to take this character and uh, do I have a glyph in this font that's not drawn yet? If I was to make this bolder by just going like this, this character is kind of bold, but it's not that bold anymore. I mean, it looks crazy right now, but it's kind of bold, but it's not that bold anymore. Because the counter space has been taken away, it feels like, okay, now this, the thickness of the counter is like the same width as the thickness of the stem. My perception of this character is is that it's it's not really bold anymore. So let me get rid of that before I mess up my font. Okay. So what that means is that I'm taking counter space away, so I need to take away counter space on the left or the right. It's interesting that actually this works pretty well, I would say. But really what you're doing is you're working with values then that are going to get a lot less in terms of increment than the ones that you worked with in the light. I think that personally within a bold, you want just a little bit less than the counter, if you can target that. And it's a lot easier to see these changes here. I think that's pretty good, to be honest. Maybe a little bit less. We'll go to 58. Because we also want that same gravity. The effect of a bold face, bold type face, is that it gets pretty bold. 
and that they're pulled together. Sorry, it, it gets pretty bold, but it also the letters are pulled tighter together, which gives them an impression of boldness as well. Okay, now if I was to do the same exercise, which is all I'm going to do right now with the light, let's open this. Notice how the light at 50 is way too tight together. And with the light, I'm missing a lot of space. Okay. And then, in fact, in this concept, you could see that really well. Look at how the character width is not that much different. It's It's got to be about the same. It's In fact, it is a little bit narrower in light. However, the side bearing, you'll even see it here. Look at the values. Ah, I didn't change that. Sorry. But they should be more open, technically. Um, okay. So what was our value then that we created here? 85 and 80, which is, I think, pretty open. I think it's too open. But let's try 85 and 80. That actually works pretty well there, but I'm going to open it up. It's, it's probably going to be something like 95 and 85. And now the O at 50 is actually pretty comfortable, but it could be opened up a little bit more. Actually, I think 55 works really well. So there's your difference. If I tile these things somehow, look at the difference now between the bold. Oh, sorry. There we go. No. Okay. So that's the difference. You lose counter space, you take less space from the side bearings away, bring them closer together, give them an impression of boldness, and it's just inherent in their structures. They have to be done this way, And but you gain lightness. You know, you take space away from everything, the stroke and the counter, and then you need to give more space around it so that it is harmonious with that shape. Okay. So I also talked about I wanted to show you a fitting document. So I'm going to close these down and we need to go to the folder. So you will also get something called fitting test docs. Now, Juliet Shen's document that I've included here, this is a really cool document that you can develop for yourself or you can copy her text. If you were designing a full typeface, you notice that uh, you need to have a full character set here for this document to work. But this is to put a typeface through the ringer, so to speak, with every character you can imagine that will be used in Latin. I think that this character set, it has open type features being put to use, but also this is a massive character set too, where it's got German words, it's got Polish, Romanian, Serbian, French, English, uh, Swedish, you name it, it's Spanish, everything, Portuguese, it just, the list goes on. So that it can test every as many different situations as it can and say, okay, generally, all the members of this typeface, are they working somewhat well together? So it's a pretty cool test document you could develop for yourself if you take type design further to plug your font into. This fitting test doc right here, this one, is something that Harrod Unger taught me. So what you see is Minion, but you see it at different increments of tracking and they're all negative, or sorry, yeah, they're all negative values. So what Harrod said is he said, take your fitting and set it in a column of text at zero, like no tracking, just the normal fitting, and then take that same, a copy of that same column, put it over beside it and give it 10 units of tracking less and keep, so go to 20, then go to 30, etc. Keep squeezing it together because what he said is, if your fitting is working pretty well, when you get to 10, 20, even 30 or 40, it's still gonna look pretty harmonious. Like the scaling is going to show you if there's any combinations that are weird in your letter designs or in your fitting. So this is a really great technique that you can use as well and you've got this document to run it through. But ultimately the best thing that you can do for any fitting is you can set it in language because remember when we're designing type and working with typography we care about actual language how does the font look here here's a quote from Harrod Unger he would say that language has a way of evening out the weird oddities in a typeface 
So he said, even when you can't get the fitting to work really well, ah, there's a devil word, uh, even when you can't get the fitting to work, what you seem to be seeing is not very great, is a graphic, uh, someone with a graphic eye, if you set it in actual language, once you get everything fit and designed, this can tell you if things are working more or less well. It will also show you where irregularities occur. So once again, you notice these test documents I've got here. I'm trying out the typeface in these different situations to see, does it look like a normal text? And that's up to you to answer that or other people to give you a feedback on. Okay, that's it for this video. You also have, oh, before I cut this one, you also will have this test text that you can copy and you can decide to put it into InDesign or you can throw this directly into Glyphs as well. That works quite well. Um, personally though, rather than doing this, I prefer that adhesion method myself, but you could work with this. It works quite fine. Okay, that's it for today, for this one.